Hello, everybody. Uh, Pepe Lapute here today, and I've come to say I died doing what I loved. And this is the Generic Luck Issue Podcast. Hello. Hi. Today, uh, it's May and John here, So, and we're, we're in person again. We're going to try doing this. Yes, I'm looking at Marcus's face right now. I know. I'm jealous. It's traumatizing. I wish there was a mirror in this room. Shit. <laughs> um, so, yeah. <laughs> let's let's uh, go straight into a question. What... That's it. It's <laughs> um, my first topic. No, I have no idea. You have no my idea? question is why? 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 That's a big question. This is good. Socratic. Yeah. I like it. It's one of the two things. Socrates is hot. Who, what, when, where, why? I wish I had a Socrates' bod. Whatever it was like. Old man wearing a toga or something? I mean, he wasn't always old, was he? <laughs> I think he oh. came out as a squalling I've, babe I've and only, he was already like <laughs> I've only seen Socrates as old. In my mind he was never young. That's fair. <laughs> He's old to us. He's just the ash and dust in the wind. Man. Yes, exactly. Yeah, he was never born, he just spawned. He <laughs> just got created from Adam's rib. Yeah, he was the elder character in the story. Yeah, he was he was the Merlin of the Greek sto- of the Greek Arthur. Just aged backward. Yes. <laughs> nice. Wait, is he like pre birth right now? Maybe he's born right now. Oh, dang. maybe Socrates is always with us. Socrates maybe, is always here. Maybe Socrates is the friends we made along the way. So eventually, <laughs> <laughs> eventually, for self driving cars, here's my question: um, Do you think that they should? be optimized to help the group or the individual so like you're in your car and it's driving you places Mm -hmm. and everyone else is in their cars and they're all self-driving and there's a network of self-driving cars and they're all talking to each other so they could optimize it so then everybody like on average people get to their destination in less time Mm -hmm. or everyone's car could be selfish for you and just get you to your place and be like, screw cooperating. So should it be on your side or should it be just trying to make everyone get places faster? I feel like you just cause a pile up or something pretty dang quick or something. Wouldn't maybe you? maybe your own car might kill you in the process. <laughs> I guess. But like, they're, they're perfect drivers. Mm-hmm. So it's like you you're driving and you're obviously trying to optimize your own time right now. But imagine... A computer doing that for you but it's not trying to make the average time for everyone else go down as well it's just trying to optimize your time well, if that's the case if every if every single car is programmed to be perfect and optimize their time wouldn't they inadvertently be working as a group at that point maybe but let's say there's a situation which uh you could sacrifice time and everyone else would like you take a back road that is a longer distance mm. to go and it's a slower speed but it would help by losing the pile up on wherever the main road is. Yeah. That's weird. Something like that. I mean, you could, I guess you could just let it, that be in the hands of the driver. Just, or GPSs. Dude. Just push a button. Just say, like, when you're about to start your GPS route, maybe it'll ask you something like, do you want to take a side route? And then you just ping that shit. I guess. Yeah. Or do you want to drive on the sidewalk? Yes. <laughs> do you want to hit bicyclists at any opportunity? <laughs> just, just have, like, a, a, like completely fine-tuned settings. And just be just like, how's your day doing? And then if they hear no response, then they just get you at home <laughs> on the main road. <laughs> Drive on the, sh- the shoulder of the highway. Just launch the car into the air, just in the direct trajectory of your house. <laughs> Similar question then. Should it be optimized for time or for gas usage? Oh. I feel like all these things would be just messed around with the settings, wouldn't it be? You could like configure it. I feel like it'd yeah. be hard to configure whether it's group meant to optimize for you or the group since it's a network of cars mm-hmm. yeah because then some cars would be prioritizing their person while other ones would be prioritizing the group <laughs> yeah you know, i feel like right. that wouldn't work as well prior prioritizing the group is socialism exactly so basically it's un-american yes yeah. we live in america our so, forefathers died to give us this socialist free country. I should get killed for just even thinking about <laughs> yeah, it. Absolutely. Basically. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's that's not fair. American. How dare you? Honestly, like at all this uh, I'm not sure, I feel like I'm like partially like avoiding your question accidentally, but like in my mind it just feels like with everything that I'm thinking of, 
they would either just be one main road and they would just like move your car over to your house at that point or like everything would just be fine-tuned settings wouldn't it be great if roads just like were better <laughs> and more direct <laughs> and highways didn't have like a million roads that cross them logistics dude you no know, i wish our <laughs> cities were not built around the uses of usage of cars i wish we actually had like like more light rails oh shit yeah like that okay. like the one that's being built in eden prairie right now yeah I, I well, for a second I thought you were gonna say something like I wish they were built around helicopters or something when that you said that cool. built around cars. <laughs> just have mega buildings, mega structures that you just work in the same building. Do you mean air in. traffic uh, control at that point? Fuck that! Oh my god, that'd be insane. <laughs> Helicopter accident. Every, every every building has a helipad. Oh my god, that'd be dangerous. No, no, yeah. I don't actually want that yeah, at all. Would... Imagine Coruscant. Exactly. But... We would Why be is having... there traffic on Coruscant? That's the real question. <laughs> Why are they all going in lines? <laughs> Why are there roads in the air? I feel like there's better ways to do it. What the hell are you guys doing? <laughs> you told me it's not like a high, fast, like almost like Tokyo on steroids light rail that just yeets you over to where you need to go. Watch there be like an auto industry that made regulations, passed regulations through the Senate in like, Star Wars to the, like mandate roadways. The automation was so, it has gotten to the point where they're actually like representatives within the Grand Republic. Yeah. I'm actually surprised that's not a thing. <laughs> it should be. Like right now, like a lot of the reasons that roads like don't make sense, I think, is from lobbying as well. Oh, yeah. The, like, mm-hmm. auto industry. Making. The auto industry um, would probably heavily dictate the reason why light rails would be hard to implement, too. Because, at this point, they, they kind of have a vested interest in keeping their cars from driving and selling. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the things that frustrates me, is whenever I want to go somewhere, I would always have to drive there. Mm-hmm. Like, almost nothing is within walking distance, unless you live in an urban area. Era, area. Yeah. I can hoof it to the grocery store from here, but it's like, I can only do that on a weekend because it takes about an hour to get there and then an hour back. It's and I'm lot carrying my groceries. Oh yeah, that's a pain in the ass. I've done it, I do it like every other weekend probably, and just to get a couple things. I don't do like a whole grocery sh- trip. But yeah, uh, I did the same thing on uh, campus where you, because the, you have to think about your walk back, mm-hmm. you can't. Often, more often than not, you actually can't get all the shit you want, you need. Yeah. You you just think to yourself, I gotta carry this shit back. Yeah. So you start you start carrying stuff that's actually comfortable to puff back. When like the weather matters, like if it's summer, you can't get anything that needs to get. Oh trouble. shit! Yeah, no popsicles for you, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you have a cooler with you. It's true. Do you have a cooler, May, that you could carry to the grocery store? No. Yeah. <laughs> that costs money. Well, during the summer you can bike, which gives you a little bit more storage space. During the winter, it's well. You can bike if you have special tires, but I was walking a lot. Shit. Yeah, I like walking a lot anyway. So mm-hmm. I just special... like I need peanut butter, and I just walk and grab some peanut butter. Do you have special tires for your bike for winter? No. Okay. No. Where... I have big tires, but not not like the uber big tires though. Yeah. So are those like really crazy big tires? The ones for so like snow and stuff? Yeah, I think they're also have different tread on them to make them less slip. That makes sense. I think they might make ones that have like almost like cleats on them too so not cleats cleats don't do well on ice but you know something like pokey whatever those things are for ice for snow yeah. stuff yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that would be like chains uh, unfortunate if you happen to run over a pet with that thing yikes <laughs> oh my god <laughs> I feel like running over a pet with a bike in any situation is probably unfortunate it's yeah pretty... but like with those tires it's more extreme it's true then they're like punctured and crushed. Yeah. What kind of person is failing to see the pet in front of their bike, though? I feel like you have a lot less of an excuse for that than the car. Well, sometimes when you're biking past a dog walker and they don't control their dog uh, on the leash, they yeah. might run in front of your yeah, bike. Yeah. Blind people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Is it <laughs> all the blind cyclists? I just didn't see you. <laughs> <laughs> that takes skill. Honestly, I'm always really impressed by blind, for, by like people who are either blind or deaf. Like I always think to myself, like because of course, yeah. How to help they navigate? Like, like they have the sticks. I'm always so impressed by it because like um, there's people like that were on campus that like he knew that this was where the bus stop was, and then like yeah. he didn't even ask me when the bus was you coming. Just memorize 
I don't even know. It's impressive. Steps, I there guess. Was, yeah. There was this one time I had to, I had to help an old blind man across the street. He had like no idea where he was going. Oh yeah. shoot! And he was just like right when I was praising them. Yeah, he was just like, well, "Where am I? I don't I don't know where I am." And I'm like, "Okay, sir, here, just just grab my hand. I'll help you." And then he just kept like turning around and hitting the nearby cars that were like parked in front of him. Oh man! They were like in front. They're in front of the the red light. Can you imagine blindness and dementia? Because normally, like, you get really comfortable with... Although in dementia, you don't really forget places, I don't think, as much as people. I, I wouldn't know. know. Yeah. I don't know either. I'm talking about my ass. But... I'm, I'm, I'm always talking on my ass. The but... moment we're not talking about Rome or something, I'm talking on my ass. <laughs> but, like, yeah, that's like Because I feel like a lot of it's just navigation by memory. For Must be. People. Like a familiarity type of thing? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I can walk around my house at night with the lights on and, like, with my eyes closed. That's true. Oh, uh, what, uh... Not I, quite this house yet, because it's new, <laughs> but... By, uh, my fourth year in Iowa State, I was very comfortable walking in, like, the general area around campus. For the most part, I could orient myself pretty dang quickly to where I am, if I, in case I, for some reason, lost sight of where I was. Yeah. But, I just, it's, it's so interesting to picture it from somebody that can actually see, because I just, it's like, wow, it's just so crazy to think what kind of navigation techniques they must use. Yeah, when there's clutter, it must suck. Yeah, like, how the hell do you go through a city? Right? Yeah, that's crazy to me. Like, the walking at night in the city. Yeah. Especially, like, a lot of litter. Oh, that's a bit shit. Yeah. yeah. Just, like, things that aren't normally there that are all of a sudden yeah, there. Like the lack like, of consistency. Yeah. And yeah. road work. Oh, God, I didn't even think about Jesus. that. <laughs> I mean, that's the Open Norman. Open manhole cover. Yeah. yeah, that's the Norman Minneapolis. Norman? The norm. Oh, the norm. Not the norm. The norm in Minneapolis. I'm sorry. That was the. That was <laughs> the norm in Minneapolis. I, I didn't just, know they I had was a about, town. I was about to be so happy. I thought you were going to tell me that there was a Norman it's enclave like, in Minneapolis. It's like Chinatown, but Norman. <laughs> like, like I don't know. Like uh, Normans are uh, basically uh, Vikings that became French and uh, baptized. Oh, <laughs> that's what I was about so to say. So pussies. Yeah, they're French Vikings, yeah. basically. The traitors. They actually ended up invading England. That's where the 1066 comes from. Who didn't end up invading England? A lot of people invaded England, and generally regretted it. Because their fleet would go, and then it would be like, oh, by the way, we have wind. A lot of people were very successful with invading England. That's true. It's just the the Spanish just couldn't do it. (laughs) French also had bad luck, oftentimes, when they were crossing the English Channel. That's true. Normans were the ones that were successful. We have an unbeatable fleet, and then nature is like... (laughs) British also just kicked their ass, too. (laughs) Like Trafalgar, they just completely dabbed on the Spanish and French fleet there. Good times. Yeah, very good times. (laughs) We all know how much I like Trafalgar. <laughs> Battle of Trafalgar. Good yes, ship. sir. Admiral Nelson's. I didn't. I couldn't get to see a ship. I was when I was in London. When I was in England, I, like apparently HMS Victory, his flagship is still like. Oh, I don't really? know if it's in London, but I know if I, if I searched it up correctly, it's actually still somewhere in England or the UK, I should say. Huh. I didn't see it either. I saw a statue. In Trafalgar Tower. Square. Yeah. Trafalgar Square is cool though. Yeah, it seeing is. uh, seeing H, seeing Nelson and stuff like that in the t- column and stuff yeah, like and that. Yeah, and the floating people, you know. Oh yeah, and then all the dead Spanish people around it too. Yeah, that was the best part. <laughs> all the street performers that line up there. That's true. There's a lot of street performers. There were like a lot of people that were just like doing this floating trick. I assume with like magnetism or something. What do you mean by floating trick? Know. They were like floating in the air, but then they had like a thing below them, and I assume they were sitting on. I don't know. I don't know how the hell to do frozen statue <laughs> stuff. Floating, yeah. Have you guys been in a big city recently? Uh, not really, no. I've been trying to avoid that like the plague. Yeah, that's true. The oh. last time I was in a big city was straight up in Europe. <laughs> yeah. Minneapolis is fucked right now. Really? Yeah. Really? Was it? Well, there's, uh, well, for one, COVID. Two, increased crime rates. Hmm. Lots of carjackings happening. I was just in Minneapolis. I walked on the Stone Arch Bridge. Oh. That was nice. Yeah, I didn't like going to the heart of Minneapolis or anything. The core, just into the nice areas for you know rich people. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I have a, I have a tourists. Um, I have like a, a friends. Like they live, they live in this one house in this one nice street. They're like they live in this really safe bubble. Yeah, and like the rest of the neighborhood is all dangerous. But nope, just their street. It's all peaceful and quiet. That's weird how many cities, like, 
have that where a block is like it's a good block and then the next block over is a bad block my uh, yeah. dad brought that up when he he said that when he lived in new york he, he just told me yeah john you could go there you could go one block and you're perfectly safe and then you know the next block you can't go there that's how duluth was i'd move like a couple i moved a couple blocks up my last year and it was like a hell of a lot nicer wow but it was you could walk <laughs> To my old house from my new house. Easily. Wait, quick so. question. Uh, going back to your original question, was there like a, a point you were building up to? No, it was just to get us going. Oh, nice. Just I like that. <laughs> yeah, I was just going for it. I kind of like that too, yeah. It just makes us... I legitimately had the question before, and then when I was like, what? I forgot my question. Actually? And I was like, yeah, I was like, fuck. <laughs> oh my <full> God. stop. <laughs> and then we just rolled with it. Do you have any fine. ideas what the question was? <laughs> No, no, that was my question, and I forgot it, but then I remember Oh, it. I'm sorry. I got yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought this had something to do with a recent news story. What was it? Hmm? The news story. Oh, no, I thought it had a oh, question. Okay. No, I was just thinking about it in the car one day. I was like, huh. What? <laughs> <laughs> what? Like, is it Why? Un- is it un-American if we all cooperate? I mean, it's definitely uh, degeneracy. Yeah. So. That sounds pretty dang degenerate to me. It's pretty feminine. Um, pretty feminine. femboy. Yeah, yeah. It's like this <laughs> this idea of we all need to work together, community. That's the, no competition. That's degenerate. Yeah, it's all it's for a bunch of soy boys. <laughs> soy boy degenerate. Pretty sure that's like a legitimate argument too, by saying that there's like due to lack of competition, like breeds mm-hmm. weak people or some shit. That's what they would probably argue. Yeah, it's just like soft core social Darwinism, basically. Yeah. No, well, it kind of is actually because it kind of <laughs> just is social Darwinism. Because then, by eliminating the competition, then there's no, I guess, from a from a social Darwinist mindset, they would believe that there's no ability for hu- the human race to evolve or grow <laughs> if you were to have no competition between the quote unquote races. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Yes. Darwinism. Bastardized Darwinism. Social Darwinism. <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> gotta love, gotta love how Darwin just gets so misinterpreted. A lot of people, it's great. Yeah, yeah. Nietzsche too. Just so many gotta people. Love too many people to name. Yeah, they, they just look at one thing and go, "Aha!" <laughs> <laughs> this one thing that you said, I feel like I can misinterpret that enough to fit with what I think. <laughs> I feel like I could super glue this to what I believe real quick. Yeah. <laughs> See, look, a philosopher said it. Me, smart, smart. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we were talking about anime earlier, right? Yeah. Yeah, before we actually started any of this podcast. Weeb trash? Yes. Yeah, the collapse of Western game. civilization. Yeah, the, true, the true collapse of Western civilization. Weebs. That's the end of it. Yeah, because... Uh... Weeb incels. <laughs> hey, May. Yeah? Do you know if Sora Online still going? Uh, no clue. Oh, okay. I don't watch it. that degenerate trash. You're, you're supposed to be our weeb expert. I'm not a weeb anymore. I mean, I only went through like two weeb phases in my life. What was your big weeb show when you're uh, in one of your weeb phases? Naruto. Oh, that's a pretty good weeb phase. <laughs> that's <laughs> a max weeb. That's yeah. quintessential. The uh, Shippuden or normal Naruto? Uh, both. Wow. Mostly, mostly the original. Mm. Shippuden. Did you ever see Naruto, uh, Marcus? No. I refused. Thing. That's a good thing. <laughs> I was like, no. Kakashi was cool. Zabuza, I actually really liked. I actually really liked the early Naruto stuff. Yeah. I couldn't give a shit about Shippuden. The moment they started chasing Sasuke and Orochimaru, I know this means nothing to you, Marcus, but I just had like, <laughs> the moment they started chasing Sasuke, I was done with uh, Naruto. See, Naruto Part 1 was really good. Like, even returning to it, I really liked it, but trying to watch Shippuden, it's it's such a slog. It's, like, it's, I can't watch it. It's unbearable. Like, you've seen Dragon Ball Z, right? I've, parts of it. I've yeah, never watched the whole thing. It's just like a lot of uh, basic stupid goofy anime tropes with like a ridiculously overpowered main character that's also just like a complete just kind of annoyance and they're like no longer ninjas anymore they're like well, it has nothing to do with ninjas yeah they, <laughs> they used to like in the original they were ninjas they actually had to use strategy not fucking overpowered techniques yeah it became dragon ball z but, yeah just like leveling up Oh, significantly. Yeah. It Sig- never, yeah, it doesn't have a power ceiling. It got to the point where, like, the main character in the last section was basically mm-hmm. having cons- episode by episode Godzilla level fights 
because at this point he's mastered his like inner demon in him. I can't yeah. remember the, the Nine Tails thing. Yeah, it's been so long since I watched. And it. he was only he was only seventeen. Yeah, it's such a time. power fantasy. Yeah, <laughs> my my like equivalent anime that I watched was Inuyasha. Inuyasha. So, and that's the same kind of thing where they're just like leveling up and getting more powerful. I think in one of the movies after the show ended oh, after God. like three hundred episode, they were like throwing universes at each other or something oh my god that reminds <laughs> me of Gurren Logan. have you guys seen that yeah where they're oh actually, my god they're throwing like the struck go dicks like they're, they're fighting when yeah. they clash uh drills is actually sucking the galaxies <laughs> into the combat Gosh. and they're throwing like uh, galaxy bombs at each other yeah Gurren Logan, it's it's so stupid but it's so good that shows a mood that shows yeah. a mood i love just it. gotta keep on escalating and escalating because yeah. it's it, it knows it's dumb Mm-hmm. Like, or at least for the most part they they tried to be serious in the second arc but then they were just like nah fuck it we're gonna be stupid again there's a really strong emotional portion to Gurnlog and it's like it's it's utterly ridiculous but at the same time it's trying to just play into this hype emotional portion of the mm-hmm. entire show it's the entire thing is just coming on Simon just becoming hyper and hyper and hyper it's just the power of their own spirit is allowing them to kick ass that's straight up what the show is yeah Wait, the the conflict between like spirals and anti spirals, you know that that was like supposed to be Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah, until they like ditched that idea. Oh my gosh, spirals and anti spirals. Yeah, it's like what? spirals. It's just like like just just normal living beings, and anti spirals are just like the 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 not normal yeah. living beings who are trying to like stop from stop the the normal the normies from progressing some shit wait so yeah. was it not supposed to be synthetics prior uh what like how, how um <clears throat> in mass effect they describe all robots as synthetics right yeah was it not supposed to be that well no like the re- like in in the conceptual stage spoiler alert for a very old game if yeah. you always played it in the conceptual stage like the reapers were the the motivation behind the reapers was that they wanted to stop the the organic beings from progressing too much to a point where mm-hmm. they would destroy the universe mm-hmm. like you know anti spirals yeah yeah reset the world before anything worse yes. happens yeah. yeah we're the we're the real bad guys we're the real monsters yeah organic basically life forms. Yeah. yeah, and that AI has like uh, concluded that there's a certain point where you need to stop their expansion before they completely end the galaxy. Oh, wait, no, that's no, that's what hap- actually happened. That's the Mass actual Effect plot 3. of Mass Effect, yes. But <laughs> but they they sort of changed it a little bit. They made this bullshit reason like, oh no, because you know they they would create other synthetic beings and they would fight each other and blow up the universe or some shit like that. But in the conceptual stage. Their reasoning was their use of the element zero, and how that was actually destroying the universe. Oh, or how zero? Yeah, the the Mass Effect fields. The fuel. Oh, yeah. Gotcha. Like how, like if the technology progressed too far, it would destroy the universe. Because that one plot, that one subplot where, um, um, oh yeah, you never played Mass Effect two. No. But basically, you played Mass Effect two, right? A while ago. Yeah. You know the one where you have to recruit Tally, and her and her squad were like investigating uh, a star, like a planet in the solar system where its yep. star was dying. That's where you recruit Tally. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and it was never explained why that star was dying. Mm-hmm. Originally, it was because of Element Zero oh. it was causing it to die prematurely. I kind, of, I kind of wish they did that outside of the Reaper thing. Yeah, Reaper thing kind of got a. I I, I wasn't really too excited to fight Reapers. Yeah. I mean, it's just kind of the trope of... <laughs> End of the galaxy narrative of fighting robots. I, yeah. I, I Like, the galaxy is threatened so many times in a fantasy setting mm-hmm. that it almost feels like a traditional boss fight. It has, not, it has no... Yeah. I don't feel any weight to that. It's like, oh, well, it's just AI decided that organics will expand and destroy the universe. Like, that's a big trope mm-hmm. that happens in, that, like, every sci-fi. <laughs> well, honestly, Reaper's... They didn't even need a, a motivation. Like, they they, they could have just been bad guys, just mustache twirling bad guys, and it would still work. Just just a stone face thing, not even mustache twirling. Yeah. Just they're a bunch of robots that are gonna, that casually got here in some way, shape, or form. We don't know how. They could have just been like the flood, you know? Yeah. 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 
I, I guess the flood was intelligent, but they could have been just like unintelligent replicators or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or, Tyranids, uh, if you know 40k, that's a yeah. better. Oh, or ty- like yeah. the necromorphs from Dead Space. Mm, yeah. Yeah, kind of like that. That's basically what Tyranids are. Just take it to an I extreme. Mean, then it's still a trope, but at least it's. You know. I still, I still take that over AI concluded. Yeah, I feel like that's just a meme. At because I feel sucks. like uh, it's kind of like with the what I what I wanted the White Walkers to be, mm-hmm. where you have a very interesting, compelling narrative of competition between the living people, mm-hmm. but at the same time, you as a person, as a viewer, or as a player, understand that there is an apocalypse There's coming. There's an existential thing. Yeah, it's like a force of nature. And, yeah, yeah, that doesn't give a shit about their squabbles, and that they actually need to deal with at some point, mm-hmm. and they will all die if they don't. Yeah, like that. Is, that creates the narrative, rather than this weird like or Thanos too. I get nothing his, out of that. His motivation, where it's like, oh boy, we just gotta snap half the universe away, otherwise they'll suffer because they're consuming too many resources. Just, just have him be old Thanos, and just have him, lar- just have him simp for the Death God. Yeah, it's I, just su- such an overdone trope. I think that's it's also like, he could have also just been like infinite food. That's what like <laughs> I've talked with. Uh, it's so dumb. Some of my friends have talked to. We have talk, I've talked about this with some of my friends where his idea makes no sense. He is now the creator God. He mm-hmm. controls everything. Yeah. He can make sure there will never be a loss of resources. He could just make more space. He can put people in a trance where they will never compete for anything. Yeah. But instead, he just decides to enact the mass genocide. Yeah. <laughs> That's also a common trope in Final Fantasy games. Where, like, like um, you always have this one villain trying to reach godhood and trying to stop... Like humanity from progressing mm-hmm. or just killing off a large population because they want to minimize suffering. Yeah, like what is that? Yeah, yeah. I think that the term for that philosophy is called negative utilitarianism. It's where you're not trying to maximize happiness, but you're just trying to minimize pain. Mm, I see. Gotcha. I don't know anything about philosophy, so. Uh... I, I'm I'm an armchair philosopher. <laughs> what does utilitarianism even mean? From like a specifically as a philosophical term. Um, so utilitarianism is basically the moral act, the proper moral action in any situation is that which maximizes the over the overall happiness of all parties involved. Okay. So you just want the most, the most happiness on the planet. Basically, okay. So then possible. in that scenario it would be like, if I was Thanos, it'd be make everybody's wants and make sure there's all the things that they would need are available to them. Yeah, I mean, he actually like had the ability to do that. <laughs> yeah, and then negative and then, would be what? Just eliminate everybody? Yeah, get rid of suffering, I guess. Like, minimize suffering. Yeah. Minimize Versus suffering. maximize happiness. Yeah, minimize suffering, maximize happiness. Okay, that so, makes sense. Yeah, so, like, utilitarianism, if you could quant... Also, utilitarianism is, like, quantifying happiness, like, essentially... Um, so basically if there's a, if there's 10 people in a room and someone's going to get minus eight happiness, but everyone else is going to get plus one happiness, that you'll take that course of action, even though you'll make this one person like really sad, uh, overall people will be happy with the situation that you, uh, made. So thus it's the right decision. That, therefore it's moral. Yeah. I see. Whereas if you, there's one where, um, Everyone got minus one, and that guy got plus eight. Then that would be immoral, even though they were all like only slightly displeased. But then one person was like, "Woohoo, yeah. yay!" That would be not the right thing. To That'd do. be immoral because there's less overall happiness. Yeah. Oh, for, okay. I got you. I got you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but it's kind of breaks down because it's like, how do you know like, in the real world has a work. there's a lot of interpretation. That, like, yeah. how do you? know before you act how exactly the end state is going to be yeah it it, it, it's uh it's there's a lot of it's weird because it's taking an emotional aspect mm -hmm. and then trying to calculate it calculate and then also to make rational decisions also like predetermine what the outcome of your action is going to be yeah it's a lot of assumptions being made yeah yeah and it's yeah it's weird 
I can't Utilitarianism's get, weird. I can't get into philosophy sometimes. Whenever I hear stuff like that, because then I can't even imagine just how much debating happens around that. Yeah. Because with uh, how I've heard anything about philosophy, the moment you the moment you have that one kind of interesting concept, mm-hmm. that's gonna that's that would probably be debated to this day. Well, for like all all moral philosophies like sound really good on paper. Yeah. <laughs> but then you just have to but then once you put it once you actually start analyzing it then i can imagine it's fair yeah i mean when you have a, something out in this like ethereal plane where it's like ideally this is how the universe should work you mm-hmm. get into this point where you're like defining things to be the way you want them to be yeah yeah it becomes almost a then you need it almost becomes like a power fantasy like an anime where yeah. it, it just becomes a, a your it just, it just slowly becomes your fancy palace for what you want the world to be yeah complete uh completely outside of anybody else's argument or interpretation of what that idea even is yeah and to like achieve anything you would need to like remove your perception of the world versus the reality of the world too yeah that's a, an example of motivated thinking you're mm-hmm. not tr- when you're not trying to reach the actual truth but you're just trying to like push your own narrative yeah of oh, what yeah. you of what the world ought to be and not what it is easily yeah that shit happens so often. I knew it's... what you were referencing with the palace and everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> idealism and realism. But, I don't know. Like, idealism is good as long as you also... Like, you can also be one foot in each world, I guess, too. You gotta be pragmatic. Yeah. Yeah, you just, just don't go crazy. You can be like, yeah, it'd be good if it worked this way, but I can also recognize that it doesn't work that way right now. Yeah, I can acknowledge. I can acknowledge this fact. That's yeah. the most important thing. What? Your friend network is unavailable. Don't look at the screen. No. It doesn't exist. I'm sorry. I have. I get distracted by flashy things. You know, this whole time I've never looked at the camera. Really? I've just been looking at the YouTube recommendations. Uh, yeah, I have too. I've just been staring at these beautiful meme recommendations we have. Oh no, Marcus is gone. What do we talk about? What do we do? I don't know. I'm lost now. Yeah, me too. <laughs> we lost our facilitator. <laughs> yeah, maybe this will be edited out. It's fine. Uh, what is it? Have you noticed how this look? Has there always been this many memes on YouTube? Uh, maybe. Really? I don't. I don't know. Like, I remember growing up with YouTube, and I just see like random videos, like this person kills Elmo or some shit like that. I feel like I've just only now spent time with the internet. Yeah. I feel maybe beforehand, I feel like I was just a kid watching Let's Plays and some crap. Yeah. I just, and then maybe now I've just realized what a meme is. <laughs> <laughs> I remember back in my senior year, 2015, where, like, we didn't even know what a meme was. Mm-hmm. Or at least most of us. Like, I've heard someone say, what are these memes, these memes? <laughs> Or, like, I guess maybe back then, and I, I, we're, like, super over-intellectualizing this, but, like, I, if, uh, maybe probably back then it was just jokes, you know? Like, we just saw stupid shit online. Yeah. And then, I guess, I don't, God, like, it, the, the term meme not exist? I don't even know. I feel so stupid right now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, like, referring to, like, the old, old YouTube, like, before 2010. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, those were the days when the internet was still the Wild West. Kind of still is, I guess. Yeah. 4 is still 4chan. True, but there's a lot more corporate control. Oh, well, that's you're, that's bound to happen. I feel, for the most part, though, a lot of it's... Uh, it's just too big, for the most part. At least not, At least I still think so. To be too worried about it going to the point where you can't say something. Yeah. Or something like that. Or, you, or copyright strikes. Oh, God. I wonder uh, how funny it would be if that if there's something we talked about we got copyright strike because I know that like Nintendo and Disney can get like a bad reputation for just how aggressive they are with their copyright strikes. Yeah, they all YouTube also retroactively enforces their rules. Mm. So like if you if you uh, put some content out there like in the past and then YouTube rolls out a new rule that you can't post content like that. They will retroactively enforce that rule and take down your videos or demonetize you for making a video 
years ago when yeah. the rule was not even in place yet. I have a good example of that. Um, there is a history channel on YouTube that I used to watch a lot called World War One Week by Week. And um, randomly, uh, that channel got, I think, like almost 250 of their uh, like videos taken down because of the, like what you're saying, the retroactive enforcement. Mm -hmm. Of course, I think they got them back eventually, but that type of stuff can happen where all of a sudden, especially for historical ones, because sometimes you may bring up touchy subjects or talk about violent things, especially for all the war to mm -hmm. YouTube channel stuff out there where you're already demonetized the moment you bring up like car 98 and then I'll, it's already over. But yeah, they don't make money. <laughs> Do you know what rule they broke? I didn't look into it. All I knew is that they lost a whole bunch of episodes, hmm. a lot, maybe even more than 200. It's weird that YouTube tries to child proof YouTube so much. Oh my God. Oh, that's, when yeah. I, there's even a YouTube kids website and I guess most kids probably ignore that and watch normal YouTube anyway, but it's like, is it really the creator's fault that kids are going on a website that's not for them? Have you seen the views that are on some of those kid videos? They blow up. They right? blow up big time. Yeah. I think uh, there was some pineapple show thing mm -hmm. that got like 50 million subscribers within a very brief period of time. That's crazy. Those, those things blow up. The, viewers, the views are insane on those videos. If you ever search up, just you know, just find like a kid's channel, search it up. Yeah, they're getting like, they get, a lot of them are auto-generated, right? Oh, I can't, I can imagine. There's like oh AI God. makes do, them. Do you guys remember when, uh, I don't know if you guys remember this at all. Oh. Do you guys know the Bradbury brothers? Mm -mm. Like Ethan, Ray, like, er, like Ray Bradbury, something like that? No, no. They, what do they do? They they do like these horrible prank videos. They they were a prank channel, but they anyway like oh, no. they they like change swap their channel to this like weird kitty stuff. They oh, they weird. they deliberately changed it to have like this kid energy to it, where like Elsa was hanging out with with Spider Man. Oh, is that like the weird stuff where Elsa gets like pregnant? Oh, well, I don't know. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff like that though. Yeah, and it's on kids YouTube though too. That's like the there was weird shit. There, there was one where there was two Spider Mans. Playing around, like, this is from the same channel. Playing around a bed, and then one of them was spanking each other. That was supposed yeah. to be a kid's video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's okay. a lot of shit like that. I remember, like, when I was playing GTA Five, and then I saw, like, a bunch of, like, GTA Five recommendations. Mm -hmm. There was one video called Killing Animals in this game. I clicked on it, and I read the comments, and someone was like, Oh, can you please put a content warning? Kids might be watching this. <laughs> I'm just like, this is Grand Theft Auto. Kids shouldn't be watching this in the first place. Get them off YouTube. It's, yeah. I mean, you can't stop them. The and parents should probably be the ones stopping them. But that's very true, and it's unfortunate that I can still say that you can't really stop them. Parents are like, here's an because iPad. the kids won't. The the parents won't. Like yeah, the parents, the, yeah, they're just like they just here, have that a iPad, I, iPad, <laughs> iPad, and a smartphone, and go to town. Like, there's no, and then once. Once you hand over a smartphone to your kid, like there's, I'm sure there's software that you can get on there to like regulate what your kid sees. Parental control, yeah. But like, a lot of kids are smarter than it's you. It's very easy to <laughs> bypass parental control. My brother bought a Wii U. Mm -hmm. The person that they bought it from didn't get disabled the parental control on it, so we had to log in with their password. We just looked online, and apparently, uh, you can find very easily. The secret password. Like, do you know how when you type "I forgot your password" or something, they send you an automated code? Mm -hmm. You can find that the one for the Wii U just online. Oh, really? Yeah. So we just wow. We just we, he just looked it up on his phone, and then <laughs> while we were in the car, while we we're just at home, just, he just went, "All right, try try typing this one." We typed it in, and we opened up the Wii U. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. yeah, Sasha Gray, hardcore sloppy blowjob. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, there's just, there's no way. The, the only way is to just restrict your kids' access to electronics, which I feel like is still a good idea. Yeah, that's probably what you should do because otherwise, there's no way to have accountability. And also for what your kids watching, uh... yeah. or give them a, if you if you're like you need a phone because if you get into a bad situation, I want you to call me. You give them like a crappy flip phone from like early two thousand. Give them those abominations, those pay phones. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, they don't 
have internet access. Oh and man, then... smartphones are so prevalent nowadays with uh, mm-hmm. kids growing up though. Now that's the crazy. That's the unfortunate yeah. part is where by by denying them access to tech, you may make them. This is a weird way like, of saying it, but I can't think of another way behind. to say it. So yeah. I was going to say socially inept when it comes to that type of stuff. But I don't know if that's the right word. And technologically stunted, too. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's a reason that kids are so good at technology, and that's because they grow up with it. Yeah. I mean, there's, like, this toddler I knew that was installing apps on the iPad. Yeah, so and then... Like, they bar- they barely spoke English. It, they couldn't read. It sticks that <laughs> shit into your mind so well. They literally I... couldn't read. <laughs> But they were searching apps because they just... <laughs> There's games that I played when I was in wow. kindergarten that when I go back to play them, I can still remember everything that's in the game. Because mm-hmm. my brain... I played Jack 2 and Jack... I played Jack 2 when I was in third grade. Say, no, I played yeah. it in first grade. Yeah, and, and people consistently talk about how the prison section with the tank is... is, is Hard uh, as shit. The people just quit playing it right there. And I'm thinking of it from when I played it as third grade and fourth grade, and I think to myself... How the fuck was that hard? <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember... God, Jack, too. I remember just running over civilians all day. Nice. It was very satisfying. Because <laughs> it's really funny. Like, the first Jack and Dexter game was, like... A, like It was a kid's game. It was just, like, a collect-a-thon. Mm-hmm. A collect-a-thon. And, like, the, the main character was basically Link from Zelda. Mm-hmm. And then, like, the second game, they decided to make it a dystopian future yeah. setting. And then... Yeah, they added guns. They and... went to town with it. It's so yeah. good. It, like, the, the Jack... Grand Theft Auto, basically. Yeah. But for kids. Yeah, but for kids. G- G- it's like GTA Lite. Yes. <laughs> with, a very, with a very interesting gameplay. Like, the platforming is phenomenal in that game. That is... J- Jack won. The, the the entire thing was platform. They realized they had a good platforming structure, and they just applied that to like a more action-y structure with Jack mm-hmm. 2. And yeah, carjacking is fun. And now... now... And in the second game, they started saying swear words like, "Oh my like, gosh. like damn" and "hell." Oh, what the damn hell? <laughs> yeah, what? Wow. Gosh, damn it to hell. Wow. <laughs> I remember I almost never used the dark jack form because it took so dang long to get it back. Dude, that that thing is fucking useless. What the the, the, ja- the dark jack? The is, dark explosion where you, he... you don't even need that. The, but okay. the Dark Storm... Jack so 2 and 3, they're both mechanically broken games. <laughs> they're not great games. Jack 1 was the best one. Oh, I, I I can believe you there. Just that the power from the from Dark Jack is fun to use. Once in a while, when you just shoot up in the air and just shoot lightning bolts everywhere and kill everybody. Yeah, you just like do the, the bomb technique where you can just, you know... Kill, that was, kill a bunch of civilians. The slam one is so lame compared to the storm one. Did, did the civilians die? Yeah. Or did they actually like, fall over and fade away or something? Or? Yeah, they fade away. They, they fade wow. away. They fade away. Yikes. Yeah. And some of them take more. I think some of them take more hits to kill than others. Right. I actually memorized this for, because when, when I was you really a kid, like killing civilians. The skinnier ones, I think, took two hits. Fat guy took more. Dude. I... <laughs> There was I, a lot of fat no, people it, that it, game. It, it, was it right? Right? Like, did the fat guys took more damage? I, I don't think so, no. Oh, shit! <laughs> I, uh... Maybe I just think they were fat as a kid, and I just thought they were uh, more tanky. Yeah. There's a game mode in Battlefront 2, uh, the new one, where it's like, there's a bunch of civilians running away, it's on Naboo, and you like have this thing that's moving forward. Wait, this is on Battlefront 2? Yeah, there's a different game mode that you can play that's like, has stages again, and the first one you have like this carrier that's going down like the main road in Battlefront in, in Naboo. And there's a bunch of civilians running away at the first time. And it's like, remember, no Russians. <laughs> but you couldn't kill them. I was so disappointed. But I got like really hyped. I was like, oh, can you kill the civilians? And I was playing with people. I'm like, why are you so excited about that? I mean, yeah. it would make it more interesting. <laughs> like, you know what's no really, Russian. <laughs> really sad? Those old games, including Jack 2, had better AI than Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> I think at this point you just gotta give Cyberpunk some time. At this point, like like CZ Project Red will patch it eventually. I know those those people like release so many different versions of Witcher One and Two mm-hmm. just to refine it after they re- they released it. It's just weird the trend in game. I guess games are more complicated than they used to be, so it's yeah. somewhat fair. But we're we're paying more money for games now than before, but and they're less complete on release. Yeah, uh, as a person who plays Europa. And with every DLC being around like twenty bucks, yeah. base game forty bucks, I buy all of them. Yeah, and those DLCs don't come out uh, finished. Mo, uh, well, they're finished, but it's buggy every single yeah. time. They have to patch it, and sometimes it takes a while for them to patch it. Games are too popular, and people are playing just buy them. 
coming and out it's when destroying it's the industry. <laughs> yeah, it's just that's my thing. Yeah. They game gaming's gotten enormously more popular even within our lifetime. Like our parents, no one was a gamer. Like gamers were weird people. Yeah, I remember for that. I, for the even most, when we were growing up, yeah, I was weird gamer kid. I still remember that as a child. And all of a sudden, when I'm working at Target. I hear a bunch of random, like, girls, kids, anybody, they sit there and go, man, I can't wait to go home to play our Switch. I remember hearing that sentence, and I thought to myself, am I in fantasy land right now? What am I hearing? (laughs) Everyone's a gamer. I realized it in college. It was the first time I realized that everyone's a gamer. Mm -hmm. Because, like, like, sports jocks were gamers in college. They played, you know, COD and sports games, but they were still, like, COD is big with, COD is just digestible, I guess. Extremely but, digestible. So, but it's now that the market has plenty of customers, people are just buying it, even if it's... Like, yeah. wait. Like, force the game companies to not put out shit. Like, don't buy Cyberpunk yeah. when it comes out, because just, you know it's going to be bad. You know? It's just the consumer base wants it. Yeah. And they're fucking... Like, it's destroying the market, though. I, I wish... So we need less kids in the gaming market, is what you're saying? We need parents that are like, no, I'm not buying you a $120 we need Call more, of Duty game. We need more critic... We need more aware parents. That's what we need. <laughs> it's, it's like, you. I just bought you a $120 Call of Duty game last year. I'm not buying you another $120 Call of Duty game this year. We need more... We need less man-childs at E3 hyping up bullshit. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. That's enough. That was my thing for uh, regulating uh, device consumption too mm-hmm. with, for children. Is like you need to if you're going to have your kid use their smart use a smartphone or an iPad, like only let them use it when you're around when they're young. Yeah, probably. You know, like you it's... can spend more time with your children. I guess I don't know. <laughs> as a as a, I still like... as someone who doesn't have children, I know exactly how parenting works. So just, you listen to me. Just. <laughs> As a former child, I remember being very going on all sorts of weird shit by myself on a computer, so it's probably a good thing to have a parent oh. nearby, especially when they're younger. Hello, everybody. Marcus here. Uh, we did a two-hour episode this time, so we're going to cut this one in half, uh, but we'll pick up right where we left off next week. So thanks for listening, everybody. Bye!